An earthquake's warm at Yellowstone is now one of the biggest ever, with 2,475 tremors, recorded since it began in June. Records show that 115 earthquakes were reported in the western part of the National Park during September. The largest swarm ever to occur at Yellowstone took place in 1985, with more than 3,000 events over a three-month period. Earthquake swarms are common in Yellowstone and, on average, comprise about 50% of the total activity in the Yellowstone region. Swarms occur when many earthquakes take place over several weeks or months, with no clear sequence. Traditional earthquakes feature a main event, followed by a series of aftershocks. The University of Utah's seismograph stations, WUS, have been monitoring the activity since it began June the 12th. Seismic activity could be a sign of an impending eruption of the spit volcano, although this is impossible to predict exactly. Experts at the U.S. Geological Survey, USGS, released the data as part of a monthly update. Of the 115 quakes, 78 were part of an ongoing swarm, six miles north of West Yellowstone. The biggest event in the swarm last month was magnitude 2.3, which occurred at 6.59 p.m. Mountain Time, 8.59 p.m. ET slash 1.59 um the 4th BST. Speaking to Newsweek Mike Poland, the scientist in charge of the USCIS's Yellowstone Volcano Observatory, said it is a bit too soon to say whether the swarm has ended. He said. The activity has certainly waned drastically since August, and the swarm appears to be winding down, if not completely over. It will probably take a little while longer to declare it over the ongoing swarm has included one earthquake of magnitude 4.4, 12 in the magnitude 3 range, and 185 earthquakes in the magnitude 2 range. MR Poland says that the precise number of earthquakes that have taken place is difficult to work out, because they can overlap or are too small to be recorded. There are methods available to work this out after the fact, however, so it may much that there had been many more earthquakes than initially reported. This is the sort of work that will happen in the months to come, as we gather up all of the available data and start crunching numbers, he added. Records show that 115 earthquakes were reported in the western part of the National Park during September. This graph uses GPS data to monitor RRENDS in ground displacement. Current deformation patterns of Yellowstone remain within the historical norms precise. Number of earthquakes that have taken place is difficult to work out, because they can overlap or are too small to be recorded. This graph shows a time history of the Yellowstone called re-uplift and subsidence patterns, along with quarterly earthquake counts. What we can say now is that through the end of September, the University of Utah has located 2,475 earthquakes in the swarm. This puts the 2017 swarm on par with that of 1,985, which lasted three months and had over 3,000 located events. This is certainly a fascinating event and one that we hope to learn more about through some post-swarm analysis. There's a lot to work on this winter, for sure the activity has spurred fears that the spit volcano could be gearing up to an eruption. But experts say the risk of such an event is low, and the alert level remains abnormal. Scientists at the University of Utah Seismograph Stations, US, have been tracking the current swarm on the western edge of Yellowstone since June the 12th. When the earthquakes began, USC said it was the highest number of the park within a single week in the past five years. Swarms of this kind are common in the area and make up roughly 50% of the seismic activity in the Yellowstone region. As the swarm continues, they will continue to monitor its activity and provide updates as seen fit. Experts say there is a 1 in 700,000 annual chance of a volcanic eruption at the site. Pictured as an artist's impression if it were to erupt, the Yellowstone volcano would be 1,000 times as powerful as the 1,980 Mount St. Helens eruption, although the risk is low. Yellowstone hasn't erupted for 70,000 years, so it's going to take some impressive earthquakes and ground uplift to get these things started, the U.S. Geological Survey explains. Besides intense earthquake swarms, with many earthquakes above M4 or M5, we expect rapid and notable uplift around the caldera, possible tens of inches per year. Finally, rising magma will cause explosions from the boiling temperatures of thermal reservoirs. Even with explosions, earthquakes, and notable ground uplift, the most likely volcanic eruptions would be the type that would have minimal effect outside the park itself. Do not lose sleep tonight, the world will not end as the result of some enormous volcano eruption in Yellowstone National Park anytime soon. But there is a whole lot of other interesting stuff going on there so maybe it's 
Worth losing sleep by getting excited about science. Ed. A swarm of earthquakes rumbling since June has begun to die down, according to an update from the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory. Newsweek reports that this has been the longest swarm on record, with almost 2,500 earthquakes hitting the park since June the 12th. But despite the recent no seemingly eternal heap surrounding the Spa volcano and its supposed apocalypse causing potential, this is just business as usual. It definitely is an active volcano, University of Utah researcher Jamie Farrell told Gizode. It garners a lot of news attention and a lot of people think that anything that happens, it's ready to erupt. There's no evidence of an eruption anytime soon right now it's just doing what normal active volcanoes do a swarm. Doesn't look violent, but rather like a lot of rumbling over the course of many days. September saw 78 quakes, August saw 894, July saw 475 and June 1028. The largest in September only had a teeny magnitude of 2.3. The largest of the swarm's quakes magnitudes was 4.4. The swarm seems to have died down by now and it left behind some data that scientists can now study. We'll look at the patterns of earthquakes and see if they illuminate any subsurface of this false we don't know about, and look at the type of earthquakes to see if they can tell us what's going on, said Farrell. Okay, but when should you, and how much should you, worry about some sort of apocalyptic eruption? Farrell pointed out that the widely cited figure that the volcano erupts catastrophically every 600,000 years is a myth based on only three prior eruptions. This figure is sort of like saying, your father and grandfather and uncle all died at 60, so surely you will die at 60 as well. There isn't nearly enough data to say when it will erupt like that again, or even if it will. On top of that, the volcano does experience smaller eruptions more frequently that wouldn't cause the same mythical destruction. The last one was 70,000 years ago. According to the USCS and if you are still worried, scientists do have a monitoring system in place so they know even when something will happen. They watched for increased seismicity, changes in the pools of hot water in the area, more gas, and the ground changing shape all happening at the same time. So take a deep breath if you're worried about the swarm. Farrell said, other than how long it's lasted, it's pretty normal.